Mike. More juice, Teresa. Let's go. I haven't had enough coffee. Well, I don't care. Okay. Uh, short turnaround. What's the biggest challenge? Is it just simply finding some energy, as you can see right there? For your team that is so banged up, how do you, you know, is nursing their monitoring? Well, I think that's part health? of the message. Is just, you know, today is a Wednesday and a Thursday. Like that's what it is, and we have to to tell ourselves that. We have to tell our bodies that. We have to tell our minds that. But we also have to try to. You know, do the best that we can to win the, the mental performance and the physical recovery battle here the next couple of days. Everybody deals with it. Um, you know, they, they had a, you know, a tough game against Dallas that they were able to win in overtime. So uh, they're, they're dealing with the same things. It seemed like you guys by design were avoiding Derek on third and three and third and two yesterday. Why, why go away from the bell cow in those situations? Well, there's some situations where we feel like uh, we're getting a you know, more advantageous look uh, when we do try to run the football. Um, you know, we, we can go back through the times that we've, you know, run it and, you know, there, there's, there's no answer. Um, but, you know, when we did hand it off, I felt like we had a very advantageous look and, you know, just didn't execute. We you know, should have been able to convert that. You look at your defensive linemen that have been able to cycle in and produce for you. Have you done a better job of putting them in position to succeed or coaching them into being better players? Well, I mean, I think all the credit goes to the players. They take advantage of the opportunities. Um, you know, they, they've stopped the run so that, therefore, you can, you know, have a chance to affect the game and, and, and rush. I think you earn the right to rush the quarterback. And, you know, this week will be the same thing. This this team has rushed for over 400 or 200 yards in four games, you know, three of the four games that they've won. You know, so they, um, they, they can run it with the best of them. They got two great backs. Uh, looks like the line is, is coming together. They've had some moving parts there in the, in the past couple of weeks, but it looks like that's solidified. So this will be a huge challenge to, to play the run this week. How much you look at the difference between the Chiefs game and, and yesterday. How much do you think went into you guys like putting the receivers in better positions to make plays as opposed to, to last week? Or do you think that was the players doing it? I, I don't even – we're going to focus on how we can get them open this week in, in the Packers and, you know, what what they may try to play us in. Um, that That's really the focus is trying to – Look to first and second down today, and you know third down uh, tomorrow. Not um, not try to look and see each week like who who did a good job, who did a bad job. Like it's we're we're all in it together. You know it's going to have to be the protection. It's going to have to be the play call. It's going to have to be recognizing the coverage. It's you know getting the football out of our hand, finding the guy that the that we like, and you know that'll be you know a huge part of of this week and. You know, can we can we convert on third down when we have to? And, you know, hopefully we can continue to, you know, we have to run the football better so that we can, you know, marry some of those play passes. Something good seems to happen every time you guys throw to Chig. <clears throat> it seems like the natural progression would be to go to Chig. We would like more. to, yep. Yeah, that, that would be, you know, trying to continue um, to find ways to get him the football, you know. And, you know, again, when, when he's out there running a route, the – like I tell every player that's out for a route, your job is to, to get open. And you, know, you can't control whether you get the ball or, or not. You know, that, that's up to the quarterback. So you know, we'll continue to try to find ways to, to get everybody involved and, and do things to help us. But you know, yesterday he came through with a, a big catch. Ryan, Ryan delivered a nice, nice ball that was over top the linebacker. So you know, I, I agree. Can you help me understand, you and Todd have said consistently with him, you, you would like to. But there's you, but you don't. So I, I'm I'm trying to understand how 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 it goes from liking to to doing. We'll see where it goes this week, and uh, you know, as far as helping you out, that's probably the last thing I would do. How much is talk about the challenge? I guess of the short week. I mean, do some things get eliminated? I don't know if it gets eliminated, uh, Jimmy. But you just try to do some things that. You have a lot of banked reps on and a lot of confidence in, and, you know, there's going to be some game plan things that we have to put in based on what they do. Um, but I don't think things, you know, you know, necessarily get eliminated. You just are probably going to carry, you know, some of your base stuff and that you have a lot of confidence in. And then, um, 
you know, add some, add a few things, but I don't think we could add a whole, whole lot. How much of Matt's offensive scheme and route concepts are similar to what he did here, and or has it been too long to go back and kind of? I think look, there's been that. some carryover, but I think there's been some new things and probably some things that the quarterbacks, you know, that Aaron liked that they've had, you know, that I would say that, you know, maybe we didn't do or Matt did when when he was here, so. You know, each year things change. I think there's some concepts. You know, they do a great job running the football. They they do. Um, you know, they run it from under center. They run it from gun. Um, you know, the RPO element, the quarterback is is very good at that. Um, you know, making decisions and getting it out of his hand. Frankly, taking people out of the running game and having a few of them here recently abandon it altogether. Are you pretty confident that Green Bay is going to stick with it? Yeah. They did yesterday. They were down, and you know when they, you know, wanted us to to get things going, they they kept with that. They they ran it forty times, and um, I, I would imagine that that would be the the plan. You know, they've they've run it on all, every really good defense. You know, two hundred yards against you know the Patriots, two hundred yards with the, the Bills, and two hundred yards yesterday, and you know on and on and on. So you know, hopefully. Um, you know, we're up for the challenge because, you know, they forced everybody to tackle. They forced the DBs to, to go in there and tackle. They put them at the point of attack, and, you know, that'll be a, a critical piece to the game. How did Ryan come out of the game, and, and how did you think he played yesterday? Uh, I thought he was probably uh, average, you know, I think just getting back in there. I thought he made some good throws. I thought there were some decisions that, you know, he, he probably could have made that were better. Um, you know, but then also, you know, there's some, you know, Everybody's kind of in that same vein, right? Everybody's got to be on the same page. We've got to, you know, protect. We've got to be where we're supposed to be. There, there's a timing element to it at times. And but, you know, Ryan will be the first to tell you that that you know wasn't his best game, but he came through with some big throws when we needed it. He was, he was able to scramble and and get a huge first down. He was able to recognize the blitz zero, uh, get us into a check, and throw a touchdown. So there's a lot of a lot of really good things as well. Especially some of those combat catches, I know that's the thing that you. you really well, you know, the thing I like most is he made a mistake. He jumped off sides. He false started. He moved. Um, you know, we lined back up and called play, and you know, made a catch and bounced off a couple guys and and got us a big first down. So that's really what I'm taking away. You know, from that was just hey, that's a perfect example of a guy making a play. You know, not letting it, it affect him and coming back and, and being available for the quarterback and, you know, uh, fighting through some contact, breaking two tackles. Has Todd Downing done all of the play calling this year, Mike? Um, again, we've, we've been through that. As far as the play call, Todd talks to the, the quarterback. You know, so whether he calls every play, I tell him I want a play called. I, that's, but he talks to the quarterback. Are you satisfied with the way play calling's gone this year? Yeah, I'm, you I think as long as the play calls are um, given to the signal caller in, in a timely fashion and that we have time to get out there, whether it's offensively or defensively, make a call. Um, yeah, I think players are more important than plays. I think uh, teammates are, are more important than players. So hopefully you know, we're getting these guys the call and they understand the details, but there, there's, there's no magic call. Um, you know, we, we called a flea flicker yesterday. It was very well executed by the players, and, and that's why we scored a touchdown. So, you know, we have to, to make sure that we're getting them the call, which I think we are, and that we're communicating, and, and the call that we're getting, that everybody understands what's, be, what's being asked of them. But you don't think uh, innovation Next beyond question. the – How have you seen that Terrence Mitchell improve and become a consistent player throughout the year? Well, it just kind of kept grinding. You know, he's played in this league and he's played for different teams. And, um, you know, the one thing about T. Mitch is I don't think he ever, you know, lets anything affect him like a lot of, you know, good corners. They give up plays. They give up passes on him. And they have, you know, people catch balls on him in this league. And they came back yesterday and knew what was the challenge was going to be, was going to have to defend the – you know, the throws down the field and, you know, on the first or early third down and four, whatever it may have been, they, they tried him down there. He was in good coverage, uh, didn't foul. And I think that kind of really fed on to kind of the rest of the game and, and, and how he played. How have you seen McCreary grow 
adjust this rookie season with all the pressure that's being put on him? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Rodgers comes work every day and tries to improve and get better. Um, he competes and, you know, sometimes he, he grabs them once or twice, but so do a lot of guys, and sometimes those get called and sometimes they don't. But he's been a very good tackler. He shows up and, and, and is a willing tackler, and uh, he's competitive. Uh, and, and he's just become, he shows up every day ready to work and, and learn. So how I appreciate about, that. How about the process just of, you know, going, going into the week, <clears throat> determining what plays are going to be up, what's going to be down, what works with Tim Kelly uh, involved and with, with Todd Downey? Like, how do you, what do you like about that process, of like how everything's coming together? Well, I meet with them. I see them meet. I think they work through, you know, a game plan. They put things together. You know, meet with meet with Keith and, and formulate the the run game. You know, I'll come in, give my ideas, talk through it. Goes on a call sheet. It's called to the quarterback. For the last two quarterbacks, you played good preparation for the way you have to rush the passer with Aaron this weekend. Well, I mean, he can still scramble. You know, the teams have uh, been able to you know affect him. He's got you know seven fumbles, but you know if you let him stand there, he can you know he can create. Um, throws from all different levels. And I would say that, you know, it is probably a pretty good lesson of, you know, you're going to have to be relentless. You're going to have to be coordinated because, you know, he's not what he was, you know, doesn't run like he was when he was younger, which was very good. Now he's just mobile enough to, to create and buy time to throw the ball down the field, which, you know, I think ultimately is what he wants to do. Mike Christian Watson uh, showed up yesterday with three touchdowns. Uh, how dangerous can that rookie be, uh, considering the banged-up secondary you have? Um, dangerous is somebody that coming off a three-touchdown performance that threw the ball down the field. So uh, he's got speed. He's got good size. Um, yeah. So he had a few drops. I think that they've stuck with him, and it looked like it paid off. He, some contested catches down the field that – you know, he was able to come up with uh, yesterday. Maximizing players, uh, being unpredictable, being innovative, are those important qualities in an offensive coordinator team? Uh, you know, I think that, you know, as we look this week with you know, how we're going to try to formulate a game plan versus the Packers, it's going to be about, you know, who we feel like we have available, how can we run the football with, you know, one of our best players, which is Derek, um, our ability to, to try to get it earn first downs early in the drive. You see the difference when we're able to you know, put the drives together and as opposed to, to stall out because there's pressure or you know, we, we aren't able to execute on third down. So you know, those are, there's a lot of things that I think that, that go into um, you know, coaches and players working together. And it's, it's making sure that there's clear communication and you know, everybody has, has an understanding of what's being asked of them. Your next win will make you the just the third coach in franchise history to win 50 games for this team. What does that kind of say for the stability and the culture that's been created in this organization? I mm, appreciate the players. I appreciate what they do each and every day and, you know, how they uh, are able to stick together, how they're able to respond. And, uh, you know, they know how to win. I feel like we know how to win. You've got a lot of guys out. How much do you think about – how much an extra week would help them, or if anybody's healthy enough to play, they're they're going on on Thursday night. Oh, I don't know. You know, I mean, I think we just try to figure out, and and I don't think an extra week, or you know, we're never going to put a player in jeopardy. I, mean, I don't, never have done that. Won't do that. So if they can do their job, and they can protect themselves, and they can, you know, there's a small chance that they they're not going to make it worse. Um, you know, then we'll then we'll do everything we can to put them out there. You know, we're, we we want and need everybody, but we have to make some decisions on on who can play. You only have one season with Matt here, but what did you see from him when you were around him? And or, I'm assuming you're not surprised he's had the success he's had up there. Uh, you know, I mean, Matt, you know, came in and and, and ran our offense, and again brought uh, you know. So, some energy brought brought some ideas and and we just we weren't together that long but it was you know knew Matt was was ready to you know for this opportunity you know it seems like he uh, has got a great relationship with his quarterback and you know they've won a lot of football games so that's not surprising Thanks, guys. appreciate it guys